friends. So we are starting this week's vlog on a Sunday and we are starting it um, going to the library to pick up some books because we're going to be reading all library books this week because I mean, I finally figured out the key to putting books on hold and picking them up from the library. And somehow I got to the top of the queue for Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. So we're gonna pick that one up. I also have gone to the bookstore a couple more times before this, before starting this vlog. So I'm just gonna go and pick up a couple more books, see what we can find. Um, and then we're gonna read them over the course of this week. And um, yes, we're starting on iPhone quality and I don't have like the brand spanking new iPhone. I also don't have a Nokia brick phone. So like I realize that it's not terrible quality, but it's not great quality. So um, I don't have 0.5 as the kids say. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, I'm just decided to read. I'm already reading, uh, the current library book I'm reading is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her last name, but that book is about this um, girl who, or this woman who's 27 and my age, so it's really adding me right now. Um, it's about this woman named Daisy, who is part of a big Indian family and she has like she works in software design apparently and like it's all going over my head because I don't know anything other than artsy jobs so I'm like what is this I don't understand but she the book starts out with her like having this huge kerfluffle where she's in the bathroom trying to get some um like pads for her boss's um pitch and she goes to the bathroom she sees her ex-boyfriend and her ex-boss getting into it in the bathroom and so then that's an awkward situation and then she runs outside and sees her auntie and then she also sees her um childhood crush liam and he is back from wherever he's been and he she sees him and automatically thinks ew because he did the thing you're not supposed to do he stood her up for prom which I didn't go to prom. Prom was never really high on my priority list, so I don't really get the vitriol. Um, but he was a bad boy, but he was her brother's best friend, and when he stands her up for prom, that's like the thing that like shook her world. And uh, so then she, from then on, hates him. But he ends up, because it's a book and it's a meet cute again, I guess, um, he comes back into her life and to save face, um, because her her family wants her to be in an arranged marriage as is the custom with, you know, Indian culture. And to say face and to say, I don't want to marry, or I don't want to meet Roshan who her auntie has like towed behind her. She's like, I'm married to Liam. And so then begins this fake engagement thing. And then you have a bunch of other aspects of the book where Liam, his family is like really Irish and uh he only really got along with his grandfather his older brother is an a-hole and um, when his grandfather passes away it's supposed to like the distillery the murphy distillery is supposed to be passed on to the eldest son but um the grandfather makes a stipulation that if liam can get married before his next birthday and stay married for a year he can have the distillery but everyone's like bad boy Liam's not gonna be able to manage that. And so then he's like, bet you I will. So he decides to propose, fake propose to Daisy and they can do all the things. He can save his distillery. She can save her startup company because what do you know, Liam has funds for that or his company funds startup companies. And um, yeah, that part's a little like convoluted, but it's going okay. I'm like a hundred and I wanna say 20 pages in. So. I'm not hating it. I'm not loving it though. Their relationship as of yet, it seems like they're trying to force this, like they were childhood sweethearts kind of a narrative, but I don't know. I'll keep reading it. I'll tell you what I think later. I gotta go to the library and pick up my books before they give them away. Okay, peoples, here's the skinny on this book. It's not good. It's not good. Um, the reason why it's not good is because the writing is a little cringy. 
And I think it could have been good. I'm not done with it yet, but I think it could have been good, like writing style wise, if it didn't try to, uh, to lean so hard on like fandomy things. Cause the main character, what's her name, Daisy? The main character is described as being weirdly smart and that's like her big insecurity, I guess. And she's in software design. Um, but they describe her as wearing a lot of like Marvel fandom stuff and being really into stereotypically geeky things, I guess. Um, but the way she talks about herself is just really off-putting. And the writing in general is a little strange. Like there'll be weird moments between chapters where you're not sure where they are at all in space or time. And it doesn't make sense because this is not a fantasy novel. It's a romance, it's a contemporary. So I don't really understand the writing. And if you have read this book and you understand what I'm saying, chime in because it's confusing me a lot. And then what else do I, don't I like in this novel? I guess I don't like, I don't know. <laughs> This is gonna sound silly because it's a romance novel. I don't like how hot and bothered the characters are for each other. And we'll leave it at that. It's a tad much, it's a tad much. But I'll keep reading, I'll keep going. Hello, it's the morning, uh, the next morning after, I think, it, chronologically in this video. Um, I think that the dating plane would be good if you could get past some things. like. It's very much so like to all the boys I loved before, like that kind of a dating pact. Um, but they're going on fake dates to legitimize their engagement. Um, it's also like that movie, My Fake Fiance, with Melissa Joan Hart and what's his name? Joey Lawrence. It's like that movie. Um, but the problem is they're telling everybody and their mother that they're not in a real relationship and I, so I don't like that it's like what's the point of the fake relationship what's the point of even doing this if every one of your friends knows you're not really serious I don't know I don't know seems a little stupid um and now I'm to a point where like I'm almost done um and we're at a weird spot where the characters kind of know that the other the characters themselves know that they love each other but they don't they haven't communicated that to the other person and now we have their like third act like breakup happening right now and the, it's i get it but it's still a little stupid so that's what's happening okay happy eclipse oh happy solar eclipse day um hopefully nothing tragic happens because I feel like everybody is freaking out but sorry I got a text <laughs> um I'm stressing out about like everybody texting me I feel like the solar eclipse has like been affecting uh just my text messages <laughs> and like my phone I spent so long on Verizon with my dad's help trying to get my text to go through and I think they're going through so pray for me pray for me um but I finished, this is why I'm updating you. I finished The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai and I hated it, it was terrible. And I feel like such a negative Nancy, um, but I don't think that I like, I don't think I like stereotypical um, romances anymore. So I think that was a me problem. Um, it was just, I feel like a lot of romance authors try to make their romances um, like, fangirlable and like somebody would like to um have that be their niche they have that be their their thing and so they put in a bunch of like tropey things and like marvel and a bunch of like quirky personality traits i think and to, to make it more relatable to the person reading it and i guess it's just not relatable to me at the moment so i didn't enjoy it um uh there was a lot of good talk about how like the characters didn't think they were worthy of one another and they had a lot of trauma growing up. So I understood all of that. It just wasn't my scene. It wasn't my thing. So um, yeah, didn't enjoy that one. Gave it two stars. I'm kind of disappointed about it. But you know, if you like um, 
romances with dual perspectives. It was Liam's and Daisy's perspectives. Um, there was the Indian family and the Indian culture of Daisy's family and then the Irish side to it with Liam's. And um, yeah, I just, I think it could have gotten there for me, but the writing itself was a little bit um, stilted, I guess. But you know, you win some, you lose some. And now I will be uh, going on to another book that I got from, from the library, technically, because Libby counts. I'm going to be reading The Coworker by Frieda McFadden. So we're gonna read that and we'll see if we like it. I'm already a little bit through and it's a Frieda McFadden, it's okay. I really just want to get to, um, there are so many trucks around me. I really just wanna get to The Tress of the Emerald Sea. So let's see if I can hold on till then. But I'm gonna go start working and then I get to go I make cupcakes after work. So see you then. All right, we are back home. Uh, a whole day has elapsed and I think we're just gonna lean into this iPhone quality because it's gonna make it easier to find all the clips. So um, uh, no reading has been done, unfortunately, but since I am home, I can read. And before I eat my dinner and bake a little bit, I am going to read The Coworker. Um, I am about 12% in already. And like these books by Freedom McFadden are really easy to read. So it's going well, as well as it can go. And um, so basically the plot of The Coworker is there are these two women who work in an office together and their names are Dawn and Natalie. And Dawn is extremely persnickety and has things that she likes um, to go certain ways. Like she's just very like particular. And um, one day it, she also um, is the like desk buddy, like, you know, desk mate, I guess, of Natalie. They sit side by side every day. And Natalie is this woman who is like at the top of her game, she's in sales. And so she's like, she really sells, sells, sells. And she kind of, she tolerates Dawn. She doesn't so much like her as a friend, but she's like, you know, she's a person, she's a human, we're cool. And one day when Dawn doesn't come in on time or at all, she, her red alarm goes up. And so she's now trying to find out where Dawn went. So that's the story. We'll see what happens. I feel like we're already, Ramp, we've already ramped up to a place and I don't know where we're going from there. So we'll see, we'll see. Hello, it's the next morning. I just made some cupcakes. I'll show you them like right here, maybe, I don't know. Um, I completely forgot that The Coworker is a KU book, a Kindle Unlimited. So it's not in the library. So that's, it can't be part of this video. And it's also good because I'm not liking it. So, Yay, I get to move on to the next library book, which will be Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. I have no idea what this is about. It says on the back of the book, Dear Reader, I started writing this in secret as a novel just for my wife. Aw, cutie. She urged me to share it with the world, and alongside three other secret novels with the support of readers worldwide, it grew into the biggest Kickstarter campaign of all time. I'm excited to present this first book to you at last. A different type of Brandon Sanderson story. One I wrote where, one I wrote when there were no time constraints, no expectations, and no limits on my imagination. Come be a part of this magic. Cute. Um, and then the inside flap says, the only life Tress has known on her island home in an emerald green ocean has been a simple one. With the simple pleasures of collecting cups brought by sailors from faraway lands and listening to stories told by her friend Charlie. But when his father takes him on a voyage to find a bride and disaster strikes, Trest must, Trest must stow away on a ship and seek the sorceress of the deadly midnight sea. Amid the spore oceans where pirates abound, can Trest leave her simple life behind and make her own place sailing a sea where a drop or a single drop of water can mean instant death? What? I don't get it. I don't get it. But well, we're gonna read it. Let's read.
pages in to Tress of the Emerald Sea, I mean Gorf of the Emerald Sea, and I can't tell if I extremely love this book or extremely hate it. It just seems at this point to be a book about, and mind you, I'm 20 pages in. It's a book about a girl who lives on this island where there's these spores so they can't get them wet or else the spores are deadly. And she's a very ordinary girl. She's not like other girls in that she doesn't say she's not like other girls. She's extremely ordinary. She is like the other girls. She's normal girls. And she is like a peasant of this nation. And um, they, all of the people live on this rock thing. And she hangs out with this Duke's son who pretends to be the gardener. And she's not allowed to hang out with him. His dad sees and he's like, we're moving. So you can get married to a princess. And honestly, that's basically all that's happening right now. What else? In essence, it's a story about two boring people who are great for each other in the boringness. And that's it. Um, I do think it's cute how their senses of humor and senses of thinking are pretty much the same. They're in line. And they have this um, analogy for like, or this metaphor. Is it a metaphor? I think it's a metaphor. They're like, you're like my favorite pair of gloves. And when Charlie, the Duke's son, says this, Tress is like, speak no more. I understand. So he's going to move away, apparently, and she's going to try and find him, I think. <laughs> Spoiler in three, two, one. We found Hoyd. Hoyd is here. Hoyd is telling the story. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so so they're talking about Tressa's family and how she didn't have time to wait. She's not like people who write. She works for a living. And it says, still it was an enormous relief when the cup first arrived. It was delivered by Hoyd, the cabin boy. And then in parentheses, yes, that's me. What tipped you off? Was it perhaps the name? Hoyt is here. Automatic five star. Hello. You probably care not one iota about my baking adventures, but as the intermission for this video, this reading blog, we are making the frosting, the buttercream frosting for these chocolate, uh, I'm about to say muffins, chocolate cupcakes for my friend's birthday. And the reason why I'm making mint buttercream frosting is because I asked her, what's your favorite, absolute favorite cupcake flavor? And she said, honestly, a grasshopper cupcake. And I didn't know what that was. So then she told me it's chocolate and mint. So I can do that. And she said it was from a specific bakery. And am I going to buy that cupcake from that specific bakery? No, you're going to get an Ashley Hanna original. So hope she likes it. Um, so I'm just going to cream some butter, sift some confectioner sugar, put that into it, whip it up a little bit, throw some peppermint extract in it and some green food coloring, keep it pushing, and that should be it. I am burning up right now. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. Anyway, uh, I will show you the finished product slash a little bit of B-roll in case you wanted to see. our pre portion green frosting. Yes, my hands are stained. That's gonna look cute today. And we have regular vanilla frosting for the regular people. Yum. My hands are covered in sugar, but I did it. And some of these look but ugly, but the ones that count are these ones. Sorry for my shadow. I did this all from scratch. If you are considering making any like dessert and you think, let me just get a box, please. I implore you, make it from scratch. It makes a difference. This is editing AH because I've realized I haven't actually given you a library haul and I'm also on my camera. So this might be better quality, might not. Um, 
I was trying to hold off though on doing the library haul because I have been trying to go and get all of the books that I put on hold, but for some reason, like the library online says that my holds are ready for pickup and then they get there and they're like, we don't know where it is. And I'm like, just chill, okay. I'll, just, I'll be back, I'll be there, you'll see me. So these are the books that I've managed to pick up. Also my throat is kind of hurting, so if I'm getting sick, that's no bueno. <laughs> my throat is kind of like scratchy. Huh? My throat is kind of like scratchy when I talk, like in the back of it. Do you think my, you look at my, my back, look at my tonsils. <laughs> Sorry, I had someone look at my tonsils to see if they were swollen. <laughs> I don't think they are, I don't know. So the books that I've talked about thus far, I picked up The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai, the fake dating engagement about, you know, a Desi girl and an Irish man. Um, I honestly picked this up because I saw it, I saw the colors and the cover, and I thought it looked cute. It read as not cute. Um, I also picked up Little House on the Prairie, but I've already read this one and I read it for a different video, but I wanted to have it so that I can hold it up in the intro to that video. So that's why I got this one. I, I picked it up. I've already read it in um, Libby ebook form and it wasn't good. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. You'll know more when that video comes out. As you have seen, I also picked up Tress of the Emerald Sea and I'm currently still reading this one, but I'm legit 60 pages in and I don't like it. It's reading very much so like The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi by uh, Shannon or S.A. Chakraborty. And I didn't like that book. And I'm realizing that I don't like books set on boats. I don't like it. I don't like pirate shanties, unless it's the pirate, wait, the daughter of the siren? No, daughter of the pirate king, whatever book that is by Trisha Levenseller. That book's kind of, kind of good, kind of hits. But um, other than that, books set on the sea are not my cup of tea. She's a poet. Um, but I think the nature of this book, this just turns into a review. I think what I'm not liking about this book is the fact that it's told in like a storyteller form and fashion. And the person who's telling the story, he's very like, he's very witty. And uh, what am I trying to say about this one? The fact that it is so like aware of itself because it's being told like a story and the personality of the storyteller, they, those two things combined make me not enjoy it. So I'm gonna try to keep reading, but it's not going well. It's like, I could like it, but I'm not. And it, I guess it's just because it is also very much so like the adventures of Amina al Sarafi, which I didn't enjoy. Um, and then the two wild cards that I picked up were, um, all Systems Read by Martha Wells, book one in the Murderbot Diaries. I don't like this one either. I am probably 90% through and I kind of refuse to finish it. I'm kind of DNFing it because it just, it's just dry and it's about AI bots and the murder bot and a sentient murder bot thing. I don't know. Um, what is this even about? I don't even know. I picked it up and started reading it not knowing what it's about and I still don't know what it's about. And like I said, I'm almost done with it. And it says, in a corporate dominated, can't read that because it's covered by the little like um, barcode. In a corporate dominated something, missions must be approved and supplied by the company. Exploratory teams are accompanied by company supplied security androids for their own safety. But in a society where contracts are awarded to the lowest bidder, safety isn't a primary concern. On a distant planet, a team of scientists are conducting surface tests. Shadowed by their company supplied droid, a self aware sec unit that has hacked its own governor module, and refers to itself, though never out loud, as Murderbot. Scornful of humans, all it really wants is to be left alone long enough to figure out who it is. But when a neighboring mission goes dark, it's up to the scientists and their Murderbot to get to the truth. You know what? If you had asked me what the plot of this was, with me being almost done, I couldn't have told you. So, if that interests you, pick it up. It was free, it's a library. 
And then the last book that I picked up is Until It Fades. I didn't even know that was the name of the book. I just picked it up because it's by K.A. Tucker. And K.A. Tucker wrote Into the Wild, or The Wild? No. What did K.A. Tucker write? The Simple Wild. And I loved that book. That book was so good. It's about that girl that like, to get closer to her, or that woman, excuse me, to get closer to her father before he um, passes away from cancer, she goes and um, goes to live with him because her parents were divorced and so she never spent time with him. She goes to Alaska to spend more time with him and because becomes less of a city girl and more of an Alaskan wild princess. So this book is not about that. This book is about 24 year old truck stop waitress and single mother, Catherine Wright, uh, she has simple goals, to give her five-year-old daughter a happy life and to never again be the talk of the town in Balsam, Pennsylvania. Population 3,000 outside of tourist season. Very specific. Uh, and then one foggy night on a lonely road back from another failed date, Catherine saves a man's life. It isn't until the police have arrived that Catherine realizes exactly who it is she has rescued. Brett Madden, hockey icon and media darling. Oh my gosh, she's going to be dating a famous person. What? Catherine has already had her 15 minutes of fame, and the last thing she wants is to have her past dragged back into the spotlight, especially on a national stage. So she hides her identity. It works for a time. But when she finds the man she saved standing on her doorstep, desperate to thank her, all that changes. There's an immediate connection, and it's more electric than the bond of two people who endured a traumatic event. It's something neither of them expected. Something that Catherine isn't sure she can handle. Something she is afraid to trust. Because how long can an or no, can how long can an extraordinary man, extraordinary, like Brett, be interested in an ordinary woman like Catherine before the spark fades? Oh my gosh, she's gonna feel like she's not worth it. She's not worthy. Instant love. Okay, we're gonna read that one next probably after one of these other flops. Okay, so that's my book haul. Um, other books that I was trying to um, pick up which I don't know if I can. The Last Mrs. Parrish uh, by Liv Constantine. I wanted to pick that one up. I also wanted to pick up Misery by Stephen King. Don't at me. I know I hate Stephen King books. I've read three so far and I've given them all like three or lower. I want to try again, okay? Um, and that was the book that they said that they had, but they were like, we can't find it. And then also I'm trying to pick up A Streetcar Named Desire. But again, I've already read that one and I just want to have it to hold up in that video. So yeah, those are the books that I'm trying to get. Those are the books that I already have. And back to your regularly scheduled iPhone quality reading blog. and it's okay it's just really random but it's okay it's okay <laughs> I keep saying that but it's okay um and then I have just been sitting because I have some time before I go into work and I didn't want to go home from rehearsal so I just kind of came out here in the downpour in the rain which looks lovely but it's terrible to go out into um and I decided to go to Starbucks so I got a drink and a little bacon gouda sandwich thing. That's pretty good. That's pretty nice. And, um, and then I read a little bit of Until It Fades. Uh, so basically I've just started the like prologue -y bit where you are in 2010 and uh, Catherine is a really annoying teenager who has just had um, an illicit affair with her teacher. So he has taken advantage of her and, but she thinks they're in love and her mother gets him in trouble and then the whole town sides with him because he's such a prominent person in this small town so she gets um labeled with this like you know slutty moniker and then randomly like it's a, it's a little weird because she gets pregnant and you know that in the um 
in the description that it's like she has a five-year-old child and she's 24 um but she gets pregnant by somebody else it was like a drunken night and then she gets pregnant and then she starts off her like career as a waitress cut to seven years later in 2017 and um she is still working this waitress job and going out on a date with like some random person so I'm really early on in this one 21 pages in and it it's not like it's not like the simple wild like it's not that writing style um and I don't think it's gonna do the same things that it did that, that book did for me but it's an enjoyable read as in like it's it's fast simple so I think it'll be good and now I'm just wondering, should I keep reading or should I go to the craft store and buy crocheting supplies? I would like to learn how to crochet. I don't know why. I know how to knit loosely. So I feel like, and crocheting is supposed to be easier, I've heard. And all I want to do is make a crocheted sweater. I want to make one and I want to start in it now. So it's ready for fall. It's April. So I need all that time. Um, but now I'm like, if I realistically, if I go to the store and buy the crafting supplies, will it be like that time where I decided I was going to make a jewelry selling, jewelry selling business? No, I was going to make a jewelry business and make earrings. And I made two earrings and I found that I wasn't good at it. So I stopped. I have a lot of ideas like that. Like I get really interested in things. Like I was like, ooh, I'm going to start sewing. I don't sew, like I sew well enough, but it's not my thing. That's another thing I've like really gotten onto and then stopped. I don't know, I was really obsessed with Sudoku for a second. I still occasionally do a Sudoku and I think they're fun and like they're really calming. Oh, I know what's one thing I started that did not finish because it made me mad. I tried to do those like coloring books, adult coloring books. Cause like in 2015 or 2016, no, 2014, 2015, I think. They got really popular. And I was like, ooh, I want to be zen. I want to color as an adult. It was so boring and it was so frustrating because if I didn't have like the perfect colors, then it wasn't pleasing to me. And I was like, why did I even color this in? And it made my hand cramp and it wasn't relaxing. So I'm not an adult coloring book girly. And I wish I was. There are so many people I wish I was. And the person I actually am, least needs to be desired. But yeah, so I guess I should still continue reading this before I go into work. What time is it? 2.46. Nope, 2.45. 2.45? I just looked at 2.24 and 2.25 and flipped those numbers in a strange way. It's 2.25. I don't need to be anywhere until, until 3.40. So I have some time. I should read or go to the craft store. We'll see which one happens. Hello, my dudes. It is Thursday and it's like almost four o'clock PM. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened. Not really, but a whole day has elapsed. And um, I have gotten kind of farther along into Tress of the Emerald Sea. I am now on page 217. So I'm about 58% of the way through and my thoughts remain the same. I don't love it and I don't hate it. And I think I could love it or hate it. Like at the end of this book, it'll either be a five star or a one simply because of its digressions. It digresses so much. And the narrator is kind of like, he's like that annoying, but smart guy in any class setting. Like you kind of, you love when he pipes up, but you really just like, sometimes it gets to be too much. And right now it's a little too much, but um, we're having like, we're having trust find that she is more than a, a girl that, you know, likes to stay home and cook and wash the windows, which is great for her. Um, but the story itself is not that interesting and the pacing is bad. So those are the reasons why it's kind of going to get a low rating unless it does something extraordinary towards the end. 
and uh, yeah, so that's what I'm reading. And I also was reading like a couple chapters of co The Coworkers, but not a library book, so won't talk about that too much. And um, oh, and then I spent most of the day just editing. And somehow this weekly vlog is going to be north of half an hour, which I guess is fine. Like if you if you like longer vlogs, let me know down below. If you don't, let me know down below. Let me know. Um, but yeah, I am ready to go to rehearsal. My hair looks like trash. I kind of look like trash. My throat still kind of hurts, but I don't think I'm sick. So those are the updates. I just didn't want that this. I didn't want to let this day go by without updating at all because that would have been that would have wreaked havoc on this flow of clips. So that's what's happening. It's the next day, aka Friday, and I'm sleepy. <laughs> oh, I haven't gotten enough sleep within the last few days, but that's a me problem. I have also finished Tress of the Emerald Sea. I'm gonna give it two stars. It was bad. Not bad in that the writing, well, no, it was the writing. It was just way too, like, tongue-in-cheek, and I just don't like, like, I usually love this character that was narrating, but this time I hated the character, so that was unfortunate. Um, and like I was saying before, the pacing was just really um, weird. It ended up being a story that I wasn't expecting it to be. And of course it happens on a boat and I just don't like boats. And it just had a lot of tropes in it or plot lines that I don't personally like. Um, and so for all those reasons, I didn't really enjoy it. The ending was like cute or whatever. And like the way things wrapped up, it was nice. I just feel like this story was just a story. I guess that's what I'm getting at. The story was a story for story's sake. And not something that appealed to me. So, um, and that makes me upset because I don't know if I want to read any of the other, like, one-offs that Brandon Sanderson has. Like, any of his other secret projects. Like, I know Yumi and the Night Painter is one, and I don't know if I'm going to read that one now. But I am glad that I read this one from the library because I know I will not want to buy it. And that just means that I didn't waste any money. So, yay, library. Um, I do think this is a good book for people who just enjoy Brandon Sanderson. Um, I think it's just like a story for story's sake. So, I do have to also say that I did enjoy some of the references that were made to just other things in the Cosmere, Cosmere, in the Cosmere universe. So, if you like inside jokes, essentially, this book will be good for you. And I think I did like Tress. Like, I enjoyed her journey as a character. I'm trying to find things that are actually likable about this book. Um, her journey and the ways in which the story wrapped up were enjoyable. It's just there's a lot about the spores. That's probably why I didn't like it. It's just a book about pollen. And it's spring, so it's triggering me right now. <laughs> so the the whole plot of like the spores and the ways in which you use the spores and all of the different, like the magic system in this, the magic system in this book is just pollen. So that, it, that being like the most prevalent part of the novel did not appeal to me. I am, however, curious to see other people's reactions. And I don't know why this got such a high rating on Goodreads. And I want to watch videos of people talking about it. Um, if you have uh, read Trust of the Emerald Sea, please let me know what you thought about it. Did it did it live up to your expectations? Did you have any expectations? Because I had none and they didn't live up to them. <laughs> all in all, I didn't, I wasn't like super excited to read this book. So I'm not too pressed, but it did not live up to my standards of Brando Sando. You feel? You feel. That is the second book that I finished this week. Let's see if we can finish another one before Sunday. Um, I will try to continue on in Until It Fades, although that book is going to be 
pretty trashy and I'm gonna probably enjoy it. It's trashy nature. Um, again, my throat still hurts and I don't know what's happening. I definitely know I'm not getting sick, but it's just really like, it's just a hindrance. It's just a bothersome thing. It's Saturday. I have just gotten back from rehearsal and I've done absolutely no reading. I don't think. No, I think I read a little bit of the coworkers, but I've just been like not in the mood for until it fades. We'll see if I read it tonight. Um, I washed my hair, obviously, as you can see, wet head, but I did buy, wait for it, crocheting supplies because I'm going to learn how to crochet. I am now extremely fixated on it. Is that's what the kids call a hyper fixation? Back in my day, it was just called becoming obsessed with a new hobby. So I'm obsessed with a new hobby that I haven't even started yet. And I don't know if I'll be good at, but I'd like to try. So I'm going to comb my hair because I need to do that. And then I'll probably try and read a little bit before I have to make dinner. And then I will crochet the night away. That's it. <laughs> This is just the end clip, essentially, of this vlog because tomorrow is the start of a new week. It's Sunday, so that is the end of this vlog. So if I come back, I come back. If I don't, see ya. But I'll probably come back. Um, yeah. Mama's tired. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Uh, I have to go to work today, but before I do that, let me tell you all the things I did not read. So this is the end of the vlog. Anticlimactic. Um, I have not read until it fades. I don't think I will today. I mean, I might, who knows, but I am not vibing as much as I thought I would with that one. I did, however, finish another book and it's unfortunate because I didn't like it. And it was All Systems Read by Martha Wells. And basically, I don't even know what to give this. So I don't even think I'm gonna read it because I listened to it passively. It did not work for me because its main shtick is the fact that the robot has a personality and the robot's responses to things, I guess, are like the main draw to this book. And I just didn't enjoy it. It's a short book. It's and it, it, it just doesn't do what I wanted it to do. But that's the only thing I can really say about most books that I don't like. They don't per they didn't appeal to me personally. But while I was reading Murderbot, I was crocheting. I figured it out, you guys. I still need to do eight more rows until this little square is done. And then I get to do a bunch of other little squares because I wanna make this sweater. Editing me is gonna put it right here. I wanna make that sweater. I'm gonna do it. And I'm starting now in April, so it's ready come fall time. So stick with me if you ever wanna see that sweater happen. Okay. Um, so this week I read, technically, I think I only read two books. I'm really barely counting all systems read. Um, I read, I read the dating plan and I read trust of the Emerald Sea, both of which I did not enjoy. Here's hoping next week is a better reading week. I hope you guys are having good reading weeks. Um, if you got this far, let me know what you are reading and if you're enjoying it. Okay, so, uh, and also if you got this far in the video, comment, comment the sun emoji because of the solar eclipse that just happened for me. Okay, like and subscribe if you want. I'll see you next week. Bye.